Hello again and welcome to lecture number 9 in this lecture series on computer forensics by me, Joachim Kjæverstad, at the University of Skövde. Uh, we've now reached the final step in the theoretical part of this lecture series, which is uh, a brief lecture on searching and searching techniques and that's, that are com commonly used in forensic tools. And I want to say that after this lecture we will go into uh, a little bit, bit more practical details and we will have overviews on uh, the FTK or the access data products which I used in, in my book that this lecture series is based on and we will also have a brief overview and demonstration of volatility for memory forensics. But uh, until this date or till this video at least we're uh, on the theoret theoretical part and we're going to discuss searching a little bit. And searching, well, it's basically what you would expect inputting a search term in some kind of search engine that's present in your forensic tool and hopefully find evidence. And actually searching is a very common way to locate evidence uh, because it's neat. And I mean that when, when you get to working on a forensic case, you usually work you use a forensic, uh, forensic program such as NCASE or FTK or SleuthKit or whatever you want. Uh, where you can usually have a file browser and, and you will browse through the hard drive uh, that, that you're examining and you will look through different things, you will look at what programs he used, you will try to identify log files and so on and so forth. But if you want to find evidence in Slack space or, or in the page file or other more unstructured date, uh, places, searching is pretty much the only way to identify this information and I mean if you want to look for uh, traces of a certain email address or maybe when, like when you want to get some pointer somewhere to look searching is what you will do and roughly uh, or how you can search and what you can search for is heavily dependent on your forensic uh, software but you can generally use either live search or an index search. Those are the main search techniques and that we will go through a little bit more in the next few slides. And what you can search for is commonly regular words, uh, keywords, or you can use regular expressions for pattern searching. And we will go into that in one big and impressive slide. So start. let's start by looking at the difference between a live search and an index search. A live search that can be called a plain search or, or whatever, uh, but it's basically a plain search where you search for a certain keyword or expression from the beginning to the end of a hard drive. Uh, and the, the good thing about this type of search is that it allows for full flexibility considering search terms uh, because what you're working with is the hard drive. Uh, but, but what you have to remember when doing a live search is that you're virtually, when you're doing a live search, you're virtually asking your forensic program to start looking for your keyword at the beginning of the hard drive and go all the way to the end of the hard drive. And this is an extremely time consuming process, which uh, means that it's something you should do before you go home for the day. Uh, however, the other way is the index search, which is based on the fact that we have an index in place, we discussed indexing in the last lecture. Remember, an index is basically a database of all the strings on a hard drive and where they're located. And, and doing an index search means that instead of searching uh, throughout the hard drive, we search throughout our index, and that makes the search extremely quick. Uh, however, the drawback of the index search is that it's limited by the index settings that we made for letter spaces and noise words. Um, remember that what's considered a string that will be attached to the index is a cohesive string of the signs that we decided to be letters. That means that we can only search for letters. Uh, also, I've seen that um, combines, some combined searches like searching for one word in close proximity to another, stuff like that, is sometimes harder when, when you're doing index searches. Uh, so these are the two types of searches that we commonly have. Live search, which is very flexible, but also very time consuming. And we have the index search that is limited by our index, but very quick. Uh, so, of course, we can search for plain words or strings of whatever science we will. And that's a keyword search, uh, plain string. If we want to search for an email address, input the email address, hit go, and that's it. That's a keyword search. Uh, however, we can also use regular expressions and combined searches. And what's a regular expression then? Well, a regular expression is using a special language or a way of expressing ourselves uh, and express patterns. And this allows us to do more general searches. If we want to search for 
uh, email addresses using a keyword, then we have to express the exact email address that we want to search for. However, we can create a regular expression that matches um, any email address and then search for any email address. We can also use regular expressions to search for spelling alterations or different ways of spelling a certain word. Uh, let's look at example in uh, in the slide here where I where I expressed credit and credits at the same time. What I basically done here is that I created a regular expression which is within the parenthesis and the regular expression or the, the pattern that I want to express is credit with or without an S on, at the end. And using FTK, I will do this by first typing credit, and we will search for credit as is. For something to be in hit, it must begin with credit. And then within brackets, I put S with a question mark after it. And what that means is that after credit, there may or may not be an S. So searching for that search term would uh, return all instances of credit and credits. Uh, we can also use regular expressions to build the more complicated patterns to search for card numbers, telephone numbers, email addresses, or, well, basically whatever we want that follows a pattern. And what I've done in, in the sample here is that I built a very, uh, well, it's quite a bad expression actually, but it's good for demonstration, an expression that would match credit card numbers. Uh, so how it begins is that you see that within the first parenthesis, there is backslash n four times and backslash n means any number followed by a dash and then I have within the curly brackets I have a three and curly brackets and the number means that what's before the curly brackets should be repeated that number of times so in this instance curly brackets three means that the four letters followed by a dash or the four numbers followed by a dash should be repeated three times uh, after that I have a parenthesis with four numbers without the dash and that is because the ending four numbers of a credit card number doesn't come with a dash. So this is a very simple regular expression that would match or return any instance of uh, credit cards that are uh, or credit card numbers that contain four four groups of four numbers separated by a dash. Um, and what you should know about regular expressions is that different softwares use use a little bit different ways to express or to write regular expressions, but there is usually some kind of neat guide. At, at least I know that FTK and NCase include good guides on, for instance, how do you express a number? How do you, uh, as in the previous example, say that something should or shouldn't be there, etc. Uh, so you can use regular, regular expressions to do uh, advanced searches for certain expressions or certain patterns. Uh, but then you can also do something that is quite useful, which is combined searches. Uh, and when you, when you want to search for, you may find yourself in a situation where you want to, um, I don't know, search for emails between two recipients. Then you may want to search for one email address, but you also want the other email address to be close by. So, and then you can search for one term that is close to another term. You can also do excluding searches where you search for one term, but you don't want the other term to be involved in the documents. Uh, or say you want to search for, I don't know, say you're working a drug scam, which is the ever prevalent example we're using here, and you want to search for a price list, uh, including, uh, I don't know, uh, amphetamine and tramadol. Then you would do a search that's inclusive. You want to return all documents that includes tramadol and uh, amphetamine. And, and I really want want you, as a good tip, all of you forensic examiners out there and all of you following my courses, I really want you to get down and dirty with trying different live and index searches, try using regular expressions, try using different combinations, because searching is wonderful. Because the thing is that when you search, especially when you do a live search, you will do type in your searches, design your searches before you go home, and then when you come back to your workstation the day afterwards, your results will be there. And if you're a guy that's good on searching, then your forensic life will become so much easier and you will find so much more information. So really try, test, figure out how different types of searches work, get good on regular expressions. Something I've seen when I've been on courses and things like that is that 
all too few forensic experts understand and know regular expressions. Be king with the regular expressions and you can find so much information and so much evidence with so much less effort than all of your peers. So get down and dirty and understand that. I, all, I, I do get a little bit excited when talking about regular expressions, I have to admit. But however, that was all for the searching part. And, and when we get back to the next lecture, it's going to be a demonstration on FTK Imager, which is a free tool and uh, for anyone to use, given to you by your friends at Access Data. And then we will go through the FTK products in the in the next few lessons. I will try to I will make a demonstration on SleuthKit or Autopsy, which is the graphical user interface for SleuthKit, which is an open source tool. And I will also go through Volatility, which is um, another open source tool that's used for memory forensics. With that said, thank you for your attention. If there is any questions, post them in the comments field.